uh, we're sorry for our historical injustice towards you as a community, but rather to try and picture ourselves back, you know, 100 years ago, what life was like, how difficult it was, and the contributions that the Chinese community has made uh, over this period of time, and to preserve what little history there is left now. Right now, as we know, there is no inventory of the um, Chinese artifacts that have scattered throughout the province of British Columbia. We don't know where the sites are. If we don't do this work, this history will be forever lost. So we have a moment in time right now to seize that and to capture that and to say that we are committed as a community, as a government, all united with all of the voices in the legislature to say that we want to preserve this history and to preserve it so we can learn about this history, we can pass it on from generation to generation. And I also think, in the opposition, the NDP thinks, that we can actually utilize this, this resource that we have, uh, as an economic uh, development opportunity as well. In this process, we will learn a lot, I think, about the friendships that were made, uh, with the Chinese community in their struggles. And as we already have met a uh, local individual here uh, who's told us about some of that relationship, the Aboriginal community and the Chinese community were very close. They experienced discriminations, uh, but they also bonded and there were commonalities as well. So there's a lot of rich history that I think we need to capture and to retain. The government's talking about doing curriculum. Curriculum is not just about the pieces of legislation that were brought in place, to which Adrian uh, had done a lot of research uh, with the opposition and with the Legislative Library in bringing that history together, but it's also about understanding the meaning of that legislation as it affected people and the after effects. Uh, and in that process, even in the times of bad things that happened, good things came about as well. And I think we'll learn this experience with the Aboriginal community uh, and through the voices of local people. So what are you hoping to hear in the official apology? What's the key element are you hoping to, to see or to hear? Well, I mean, uh, on, the, uh, on, on the apology, obviously a recognition of it. Uh, I think it's important for the government to document the duration of this period. How long did the Chinese people suffer discrimination? Uh, I think that what we hope to aspire towards a community free of discrimination, uh, as an example, those are, I think, essential elements. But aside from the apology itself, the apology in the opposition's view should be made by every single uh, legislator in the legislature, not just by one individual, but all of us. We all own it uh, from all of our communities. Uh, and then beyond that, the actions that needs to take after that. So once the motion is passed in the legislature, then what happens? Do we just forget about it and it's all said and done? Uh, no, what we're saying is that there needs to be continuous effort about educating people, having a dialogue about it, uh, making legacy projects in a real meaningful way. Uh, what we're saying and what Bill has been, um, I think, advocating for a very long time, uh, what Becky is saying is that preserve this history. We need to preserve this history, find these artifacts, find these sites, and make sure that we actually we hold them sacred in our hearts and to protect them and preserve them for generations to come. Okay. Well, let's okay. go see some sites. Okay.